Hey folks, welcome to Deconstruction the Game, my name is Mike and in today's video we're going to be doing a collaboration with our good friend Ryan and we're going to be talking about the cave systems of Cyberpunk 2077. There's a lot of speculation in regards to cut content but there's also a fair amount of speculation and theories around what content might be around the cave system and the tunnel system of Night City. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to advise that anyone doing this on console wraps up the gamma settings so you can see a little bit better because it's very very dark in here and it will help you see all the holes in the walls. Now basically if you don't know already uh, in this particular cave system this is associated with a Pan Am side quest but there are some tunnels that are lead off from the main section that are supposed to be covered by these metal plates but it seems that they've been intentionally left open just enough for us to explore and have a look around. Now unfortunately for us there isn't actually anything in these tunnels as of yet but if we use uh, grenades in a creative way it gives us just a little bit of light to see what we're doing. Now fire is the best option for this so if you have any incendiary devices or grenades I would recommend using those because it gives you more light and you can see what you're doing. There's nothing in these tunnels uh, as of yet there is a particular item that is of interest further down the road but as of now all we have is complete pitch black tunnel entrances that kind of just lead to nowhere. There's unique sounds associated with these tunnels. There are like water running sounds underneath the map and there are um, very dark patches and shadow that you know seem very unique to me like I've never seen this kind of darkness in Night City before and it's really really hard uh, trying to navigate around here so just using incendiary devices is the best way. The only reason this came about is because Ryan did explain to me that there's potential cut content within the cave system and I was a bit skeptical at first but uh, when I did a live stream I kind of decided to have a look around and I think there might be something to this there's a quite a number of cut tunnels and systems around the city but I will let Ryan talk about that in just a moment. Right now I'm just going to show you how you can get to a legendary component part behind this tunnel cave system here. All you have to do is have the double jump legs to jump into the hole and then jump down and pretty much there's like a fan in here. No idea why there's a fan and there's a legendary item inside that box. For me it's component parts but for you it might be something entirely different. So with all that out the way, I'm going to pass you on to Ryan who's going to go into some major deep dive information about the cave system and some theories he's thought about and some of the theories he's seen on Reddit and other sources. So uh, as I dive into this hole, Ryan is going to dive into a completely different one and we're going to discuss the cave systems of Night City. Bear in mind that this is going to be a fairly lengthy video but Ryan's put a lot of effort and research into the video so I hope you guys will stick around to see what the end result is and hopefully it will get you excited about what CD Projekt Red are going to bring to Night City in the future. Thanks Mike, it's always a pleasure collaborating with you on deconstructing the game. So I actually started looking into this way back in January when one of the many leaks that supposedly came from developers who had either worked on or were currently working on Cyberpunk 2077. And like a lot of them, this was kind of hated by the community at the time and declared false. But since then, some of the things within it have proved to be true, or there seems to be evidence of within the game. And one of those things is, this is the first time I saw mentioned that CD Projekt Red was aiming internally to have it patched up and to what they considered a working state by June, which we've seen. But another thing that was in this leak was talk of an entirely cut underground tunnels area that uh, was not in the game. And what this supposed developer compared it to was a section in Vampire the Masquerade, but in the original uh, 4chan thread with all of the comments, he clarified later to say like the Morlocks in the time machine for anyone who hasn't played Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. So. I went and did a bunch of looking around under the city at the time, and I think so did a lot of other people, and didn't find any real evidence of cut tunnel sections under Night City itself. Now there's all kinds of interesting stuff to be found under here, but these all turned out to be areas from cutscenes or flashbacks or other things. All of the areas that looked like tunnels under the city and were cut off, like for example the Voodoo Boy subway in Pacifica, were clearly cut off and if they did continue would have just dead ended into other areas. So at the time it didn't seem like there was anything to suggest it. 
But then I started working with Mike on a previous video about the cutoff monorail tunnel in North Oak that for some reason still produces a tram, even though it's cut off and full of garbage. And in the process of making this video and working on some other stuff, I started poking around behind the ends of some of the cutoff tunnels, caves, etc. around the map. And when doing this, I noticed a bunch of interesting things that led me to believe that these caves originally did have more behind them and actually might have even connected to each other and featured a larger underworld. So let me get into some of the things I've found. The largest sections of cutoff caves are all in the Badlands. Uh, the biggest one here is the Wraith Tunnel, which goes through this hillside here from right where you enter into the Badlands area and the other end of it is over here near Rocky Ridge. Now, in addition to that, we also have a couple of other cave areas. Now, across the valley, we have this little cutoff cave section up here in this hillside. And it's interesting about these areas is all of them seem to have to do with the Wraith Gang. And this leads me to think that the reference to there being people living underground um, and the sort of gang of underground people compared to Morlocks, it, uh, it makes me think that this might have been the Wraiths. And also the fact that the flooded quarry area over here, uh, it seems as if it could actually connect over to the flooded Laguna Bend area if there had been a cave coming from over here but I'll go into more on that a little bit later. And now from here, we go over to this cutoff train tunnel here in North Oak. And you might wonder why I would relate this to the caves way over in the Badlands. But actually, it, it's kind of interesting how every single cave entrance and cutoff tunnel, if you just point it in a straight line as the crow flies, it points to another one. And I found that very interesting, and let me show that directly of flying from one place to another. Starting out from our cutoff tunnel here in North Oak, interestingly it takes us underneath the casino first, and there's sounds of a train tunnel throughout most of this, and then it takes us to this tunnel section here in the Badlands, the Wraith Tunnel. Now, going over from this large cutoff section here of the Wraith Tunnel, if we follow that straight across the valley, it also lines up to if there were other caves underneath this cave entrance and the flooded quarry over here. Now again, all of these areas have to do with the wraiths. Taking a look underneath at the wraith tunnel, there are actually a lot of sections that are cut off and they do continue for a bit and it really does give you the idea that these could have been connected to something else. And especially since they point in the general direction of other cave entrances, it is really interesting to me. Most of these other ones are pretty small and don't have a lot going on behind them, but they do sort of point off and you can tell that they were cut off. It doesn't really look like what you would do if you were initially designing it to end. There'd be no point in putting these other rocks back here. It does look like something that was cut off or removed. And then the same under the quarry, there's just sort of the hint that there could have been some tunnel or cave underneath here, which I think is really interesting because it could mean there were flooded caves underneath Laguna Bend. Now going under and looking under the map under Laguna Bend, I found this big patch of garbage. Now this has collision, you can jump around on it, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything. There was lots of random junk outside the map, but the reason that I found this interesting to find this out here was that a lot of areas that are despawned, they'll still leave the ground clutter. Like for example, this is the section of town made for the opening montage where you see Mama Well's house and numerous other locations. And when it's despawned, there are not only NPCs, which actually exist in a few areas where something was cut, but there's also ground clutter around the area for where the streets would have been in that section. So that just kind of made me wonder if the big section of garbage that's way underneath the map in Laguna Bend would have been part of these underground tunnels. Now if you go over from that, it does line up pretty directly with this other cave entrance that's over here by the solar farm, directly underneath the overlook below the dam. Now there's a little chunk of wall down here. It could just be misaligned and it's supposed to be up top where the cave entrance is blocked up, but it doesn't line up exactly. And it's just kind of weird that it's floating around down underneath here. Now also another interesting thing about this cutoff cave entrance 
is if you go back from it, the rocks behind it, even though anything that's there would have been cut, they're sort of in a circular pattern as if a tunnel would have gone through there. So I'm just gonna show me flying back through there to show what this one looks like. Cause I just thought that was interesting that they all seem to sort of point towards Laguna Bend and then from there to the Badlands. I also find it really interesting that if there were flooded tunnels, it would kind of explain why there are so many modifications and things that increase the time you can breathe underwater. Especially when there's an item you can use, an O2 canister, that will just give you 30 minutes and you can boost it with perks up to an hour. So it seems like there's all this stuff that will allow you to breathe underwater for longer when the only time you actually need to be underwater for any length of time in the game, you're given a diving suit. So it really just, you know, kind of makes me wonder if you had to actually swim through tunnels, that would make some sense. Now to go through on a little bit further speculation here, I wanted to just talk about how some of the stuff that I've found, what it makes me think. And this is entirely my speculation, but if this leak is true, it does start to add up. Now, the main one of those is talking about how not only there were cut off underground tunnels, but there were some kind of residence within these tunnels. And the, the supposed leaker compared these to the Nosferatu faction in Vampire the Masquerade and clarified later for people who are not fans of that franchise, uh, like the Morlocks from H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Now, what the Morlocks are, and similar to the Nosferatu, is they're uh, people or vampires who have mutated to living underground. And I find this really interesting because it, it starts to add up to me with the Wraiths. And since the Wraith gang, they wear gas masks and they often are shrouded in hoods and things like that. It fits with things about the Nosferatu in Vampire the Masquerade. And what's also really interesting about him mentioning Vampire the Masquerade is that Pavel Sasko, the uh, writing and uh, questing lead on Cyberpunk has said that besides Cyberpunk 2020, Vampire was one of the tabletop games that they played when they were writing the game and coming up with inspiration. So that actually really kind of rings true to me and is very interesting. And if it was the Wraiths, I think it could possibly tie into other lore bits in the game where they talk about how the monorail construction has been stalled, unhappy workers up in the Badlands area. So if it was something of where a bunch of workers were, say, exposed to a chemical leak or something like that when building these underground subway tunnels, and they you know, rebelled and took over these tunnels for themselves and are now living under there, especially because the Wraiths are, you know, not only occupy this tunnel, Tunnel, but also are related to each of those other areas. There's something going on with the race, even if it's just an assault at that one cutoff entrance. There are wraiths there near the body when you get there. And I, I just, I found all of that seemed to kind of line up a little too well, especially considering that uh, Pavel Sasko, he only said that in a recent stream. That was the first time I've heard him say that besides Cyberpunk 2020, that Vampire was one of the tabletop games that he was running for the design staff. So that, 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 that was very prophetic, and especially because the thing about them wanting to be at what they called the game functional in sometime in June, and that came true. And then there are numerous other things that were mentioned in this leak that I found evidence, like a more in-depth gang war system, uh, differences in the AI, numerous things that were only mentioned in this leak. Once I've actually started poking around in the game, I've found evidence of what could be those exact things. So that's really all I have for what I actually have found looking around in here. But I think it's really interesting, and the more of these leaks that people initially scoffed at and seem to be coming true, whether or not it's actually the direction that CD Projekt Red goes with the game when they do eventually start adding DLC, I think it's even interesting just if we can start to figure out a little bit of what they were thinking at one time. Now, the person in this leak said that the reason they cut this was because the people up top said it looked ugly. But the other thing is, is if they took something that was so directly inspired by Vampire the Masquerade, and that franchise is also releasing new games in the same window when Cyberpunk 2077 was coming out, they could have felt that it was too derivative and removed it for that reason. Or another thing I've speculated on is that there was just getting to be so much stuff in the Badlands area and outside of Night City itself that it was starting to take too much of the focus away from Night City. So I could definitely see them holding some of this stuff off for later or cutting it from the game outright just because Night City is supposed to be kind of the star of the show. 
That's all I've got on this for now, but I hope to be looking into it more and also collaborating with Deconstructing the Game again in the future. Back to you. So I guess what we're trying to say is Night City has got plenty of content coming its way in relation to underground stuff. Could be trains going to the casino, underground tunnels, underground caves, you name it. There is a load of content that could possibly be coming in the way of this. And there's a lot of stuff to suggest that it might as well. So if you enjoyed the video guys, you can always check us out on the Discord server. Get involved with the discussion about Cyberpunk cut content and future DLC. And you can also find us on Twitch sometimes as well, doing these videos live as well as on YouTube live. So thanks for watching. Thanks to Ryan for doing all the research on this video and producing what he has so far. Hopefully more videos coming in the very near future. And as always, I'll catch you later.